and I have lots of guy friends like Mike over here. I don't like the way my guy friends talk about women. I'm not going to lie. I, not, that doesn't include me. <laughs> sometimes I, it really? does. I sometimes. Like to think I'm pretty, all right, anyway. Sometimes. You don't, you don't say anything like offensive or like horrible, but I'm just so like, sometimes I'm just like. you don't listen to this podcast like, <laughs> at all. I like to hear that. <laughs> Four men in this room leave. I swear to God, the ratio is disgusting. It's like a sausage party in here. I'm disgusted by our team. We have Danny. National Women's Day again. Get get our, get our maid Maria in here. Wait. I, I asked our guest today what she wants to talk about. She says she wants to talk about how she hates men. Wait, before anything else. Sure. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday no. to you. Oh, it's not that episode? No. Yeah, it is. No, it has to be. Okay. It's my birthday episode. Oh. Finish the song. Okay. Happy birthday, dear Logan. Happy birthday to you. 26, huh? This is age thing. Just <laughs> keeps going. Let me tell you, have <laughs> I got the gift for you, Logan? It's going to change your life. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't give me a gift. Everyone knows this. I hate birthdays. I, I gave up on your birthdays many, many times. I just now. don't, I don't get them for me. I, I get if other people want to celebrate, but it's like, I didn't choose to be born on this day. I didn't do anything. It's like, a, it's the equivalent of a participation award. <laughs> Okay, like I'm, I'm I'm a year older, which is good. I'm I'm happy. I feel blessed, but I feel like that every day. Seems to, seems kind of downtrodden. Yeah, solid. You, you kind of fucking suck. Yeah, like the, <laughs> you, you know, suck. Celebrate your you like. Boo. There doesn't have to be a there doesn't have to be an answer for it. like just celebrate the fucking birthday. I know. Do you know, know, you know, you know the fuck up bringing a cake to a like a birthday kid and happy birthday? Just, fuck that. I'll no, never bring him a cake. Do you know what's even more awkward when you bring a cake to a kid and he's crying? On his birthday. And you're like, now I don't even want to no, sing to this no, poor child. No, because because birthdays are are mismanaged. I, everyone mismanages expectations on birthdays and it leads to disappointment. Oh, it's my birthday. There's so much pressure that this day has to be great. Then things go wrong every year, which I don't know if you guys know, my birthday's on April 1st. So more things tend to go wrong. People are fucking with me. Mercury is in retrograde. The sun's going to hit the earth one of these days on my birthday. I guarantee it. It's a disaster. So I just choose God, that everyone kind of just leaves me alone. You think God puts you on April first because he's like, ha ha. Yes, I yes, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> gotcha. a cosmic joke. I am a I am a cosmic fool. Yeah. Do speaking of jokes, uh, I got an evergreen topic for you. Sure. People say there's a little bit of truth. What's happening? Why'd you guys freeze up, Jesus? Oh, because you don't wear headphones, so you don't get it. <laughs> no, because if I have to have headphones, I hear your guys' voice a lot more, and it's already annoying. Yeah, but you'll also miss the ancillary stuff that we're laughing at. <laughs> okay, anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> do you guys believe that there is a, uh, a semblance of truth in every joke? Uh, no. Yes and no. No. Okay, I believe they, jokes come from a dark place. I don't necessarily no. think it's always true. No, anytime you apply a superlative, you can't say every, like every joke really. Well, no, but people say that. People say, like there's like that saying like every every uh, bit of joke or every joke comes from a think, bit of truth. I feel like we're or, fucking up his flow. Yes, Mike, it is. Sure. No, 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 saying, no, 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 no. No, I agree with you guys. I'm happy you said that because I look back at my jokes, and I'm like, dude. 90% of these are completely based in nothing. Farce. Farcity. That's it. Farts. F farts. <laughs> Nothing, uh, nothingness. It's just for comedic joy. We joy. Can, Why'd you say like Schmidt from like, New dude, I, I, Comedic joy. I'm having, Nicholas. I'm having a tough morning. <laughs> I'm putting <laughs> words in the wrong spots of sentences. I'm, it's, it's slow morning. Why are you tilted, man? Yeah, yeah. Quit hyperanalyzing me. Sorry. I'm, it brings I swear me to God, <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. It's your birthday. I'll let it go. It brings me to one last evergreen topic before we roll into it. Uh, do you guys do you guys feel like everybody else? Do you feel better on certain days and like you have good days and bad days? Of course. I feel like that's such a generic question, but like, <laughs> but like, I for for me, my swings are so deep. Like some days I wake up and I'm, I feel like ready to charge and like take over the world, and then some days I'm like completely like fucked. 
Um, you should keep going to your therapist. Let's yeah, bring maybe. on the guest. Right. This is so dark. Our guest today is to a be. singer and songwriter who you definitely have heard on the Nash song, I Hate You, I Love You. Dylan wrote this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's putting together a phenomenal music career herself with new music out and now and more to come. Much of it is directly inspired by her personal life. It's Olivia O'Brien. Hey. hey. How y'all doing? I did write the Nash song, by the way. For you did. Uh, everyone you did. out there. You did. You're a you're a so, you're a, you're many things, but a so, you're a songwriter at heart, right? Uh -huh. Is that like your core? Yeah, I always say I'm a songwriter before I'm a singer because I've just it's something I've always done. And I never thought I was going to be a singer. I just kind of wrote songs for fun, and singing was just something that I had kind of had to do because I wrote songs. Yeah, no, but so. not everyone not everyone can do both. You know, I find it odd when. Because you started writing songs first. I mean, there's a lot yeah. to unpack here. You wrote that song at 15 and went like multi, multi platinum, right? I want to start with this, Olivia, because like I said, there's a lot. I don't know if y'all know this. Olivia and I met and somehow got to talking about um, our parents. And it turned out they were both from a small town in Ohio called Lakewood, Ohio. My mom is FaceTiming me right now. Really? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer it. <laughs> Hey mom, I'm on Logan's podcast right now. We're Cindy, <laughs> Cindy, how you doing? Cindy, all right. <laughs> it's okay. C Cindy, 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 one question before you go. You knew my mom in high school. I did. And how was she? I thought she was pretty cool. Pam, 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 Love you, bye. We love you, Cindy. What if she just came out of nowhere and she was like biggest <laughs> slut in the, whole, in the whole high school? She's like, wait, Whore. did you say no, I was she, on a show? No, my she always bad. says she was really cute and she was like a gymnast. And my mom's best friend since she was 14 was also a gymnast and they did that together. Yeah. And, and and by the way, Pam was very good. They made mm -hmm. it to the state. Yeah. They won states. Remember she told us on the show that she kept placing worse and worse as, as high school went yeah. on. She's like, yeah, anyways. Yeah, my yeah. mom was a bitch, so. Well, she okay, was. hold Is on a second. No? <laughs> so so <laughs> my mom's maiden name is Meredith. Her mom's maiden name is Meryl. Mm -hmm. Turns out they were literally right next to each other in the school yearbook. I'm not even kidding. This is Olivia's mom and my Shut mom. Yo, fuck? what? What? Uh. Two kids in LA whose parents were next to each other in a yearbook in Ohio. <laughs> God, they're tilting their head the same. <laughs> they're both like checking out the same shit. <laughs> Lucinda Merrill and Pamela Meredith. Mm -hmm. Both just two steps away from ripping a bong rip. <laughs> like, dude, like that. They both look like they're gonna go down to that '70s show basement after this <laughs> and just rip the biggest bong load ever, dude. Yeah, and that that's insane. I mean, I guess it goes to show how how little the world really is. Does yeah. this make you feel uncomfortable at all? Why? I don't know. Was us meeting destiny? I hate to. I hate to just. Um. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. So dumb, so dumb. I think we're meant to be best friends, Logan. Ah, uh, okay. I've never, never seen you. somebody get put in the friend zone that quick. Just stamp a label on that, very, seal the box. Very strange it. friend zone, though. Friend zone? An odd one, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. What do you think about Encino as a as a <laughs> as an area? you and, and um, I should preface this question really quick. Me and Olivia, prefacing. me and a, I actually use the actual word. Me and Olivia are best friends. Mm -hmm. We're in a group chat. We're we besties. talk all day. Poor We're in a group things. chat called Poor Things. Shout mm -hmm. out Poor Things. Shout out Stas, Sydney, Banks, whoever's in that. Kelsey. You Kelsey, Father Kells, you've historically been very anti Encino. Mm -hmm. What is it about the township that really bothers you? Oh, I just feel like a lot of a lot of experiences that I've had here, I just associate with um, like unpleasant memories. Um, I don't want to go for the detail <laughs> right now, but I've had I've had multiple <laughs> with multiple different people in multiple different areas, but it always seems to go back to Encino. All of the trauma. You you classically or infamously had shirts that mm -hmm. said, "I, I will, will not, not go, go to Encino." Encino. Did you end up in Encino I, again? Oh, <laughs> right. All right, you know what? At what fucking point? So that's my dad. Should I ask him about Cindy Merrill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I got here. You know hey, what? Greg, listen to me. You're on impulsive right now. Okay. Excellent. Talk to me about Cindy Merrill from high school. What about her? She was good looking. Um. A lot of guys wanted her, and only a few could get her. Ooh, sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, more guys liked her than women. Some of the women were kind of catty and jealous about her. Okay, well, appreciate your input, Greg. I'll call you later. 
But Dude, what if he just dropped a bomb? He's like, a lot of guys like her and only few men get her. And I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of them. So look, you got birthed by Cindy Merrill. Mm -hmm. You grew up where? In Napa. Okay. And then what happened that you became this 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 phenom, this songwriting phenom at such a young age? I always found I find it fascinating how people can blow up so young like almost accidentally like it you was were completely accidental you were 15 when yeah. when uh, i hate you i love you when went viral right mm -hmm. so basically when i was a kid even since i was seven i find like old notebooks in my house of me writing songs like just their lyrics are so fucking stupid but you were seven I, I mean yeah but it was like i remember one lyric it was like <laughs> me and you we were a crew like talking about like a guy i had a crush on like that was i don't know that's it literally just, better than half the shit i've heard on the radio <laughs> But I find all of these like old things that I wrote when I was literally seven years old. So I've always been writing songs, but my sister was always, what are you guys doing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's mic came up. He always <laughs> unplugs it with his foot. Sorry. Anyway. That. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my sister was always a singer in my family and she used to tell me that I was really bad I would sing in my room like when I thought no one was home and she would come in my room and be like shut the fuck up you sound like shit <laughs> oh my wow. God. Thank you. God. we all had that sibling yeah. that one sibling. we had an interesting relationship um, so I never I never was confident and then when I was a freshman in high school, I started getting really into SoundCloud and I started posting covers on SoundCloud. And then eventually I was like, oh, maybe I should post some of my original songs that I write. And I posted a couple and I remember I was on a field trip and I was in a, the school bus and these two guys on the back of the bus were sing, playing playing my songs that I'd posted and making fun of me. And I went home and I deleted every original song I ever posted and I never posted one again. And then- I know. What? You have such an overlapping I know, story. I know. And you need to give a, uh, an, uh, the audience a warning about it to not fucking do that. Yeah. So here's the warning. Cause I, I had a similar experience. I, I made a body of work when I was young from like maybe, maybe 10 to 13. And a girl made fun of me in my, my, my YouTube videos because they were pretty cringy, which they were, but it really got to me. And by the way, some like, I'll just say she, she was a thought, dude. Like <laughs> she was a fucking thought, but it affected me. And I deleted all the videos. So like the first 50 videos of me making YouTube content are offline. Don't let other people influence what you do with your work. Continue. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I wish I didn't do that, but it's also like things worked out the way that they did for a reason. Yeah, so yeah. it's whatever. I only had like two songs and I don't even remember what they were, but um, yeah, it was, it was just really crazy. And then when I did, I hate you, I love you. So basically I tweeted a cover that I did of Nash's song. He only had one song out at the time and he was opening up for Black Bear and Mod Sun on tour and I was a really big fan of Black Bear and I was gonna go to the show. So I looked up all the opening acts and I found him and I liked the song. So I posted a, a cover on SoundCloud and he found it and he DM'd me and he was like, come to the show, I'll put you on the list, which I thought that was the fucking coolest thing in the entire world. I was like, I'm on the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he asked me after the show if I had any original music and I sent him, I hate you, I love you. And he was like, come to LA, let's record this. So I, my dad and I drove down to LA and I was so scared I didn't even wanna go in. He like had a studio and um, he lived with his parents and he had a garage in the back with a little studio and I was like crying outside. I was like, I don't wanna go in, I'm scared. Like I'm not a good singer. And then I went back and I recorded it. He added a verse on it. And we originally just put it on SoundCloud. Um, and then people just started liking it. There was a bunch of YouTubers like Andrea Russett was one of the first people to post it when it was just on SoundCloud. And then it ended up on like Kylie Jenner's Snapchat story. Whoa. And she was like, this is the saddest song ever. I love it. And then it just suddenly was like on the radio everywhere. And like basically it took, I think a year for it to peak after that. Um, but that was the first song I ever put out. And without that, I don't think I would have ever, ever gotten into music. I would have never had the confidence to do it. I wouldn't have known where to start. Like I needed my first song to be five times platinum in order to even, <laughs> even try. So I think I it was kind of what I needed. I didn't know that that was the first, How could you the not very know? first song that, well, I thought like maybe there was some other no. track. That's wild. Yeah. That's I wild. Was kind of fate what bit. did that, what did that feel like to have that level of success on a first song, did you, when you were recording your next stuff, did you have to take into account, like, there's a potentially a low chance that I could follow this up with another uh, uh, song of this level because of how yeah. big it was and did that fuck with you at all? Well, part of me is was like, I didn't, like I wrote that song just on piano, but that's cause that's all I knew how to do. I didn't know how to produce music. So I would just write things on piano. But once I could get into in with producers, I was like, oh, I wanna make this kind of music and I wanna make this kind of music. My first single that I put out after I Hate You, I Love You was called Trust Issues. And it's me, like the first part is like a freestyle that I did. It's like almost me rapping, like not actually, but it's like faster flow and it has like more like R&B pop production. So I, I, I wanted to figure out what my sound was. And because I had that song, I didn't feel like, oh, I have to follow this up and I have to keep doing this. Cause I was 15 years old, I wasn't ready. I, and if I had had success after that and those first songs I put out 
did something, I wouldn't be the artist that I am today because I had to take the time to discover my sound and figure out my style and get confident. I was so insecure. Everyone bullied me at my high school. Like anything that I did was just like, I couldn't do anything right. And I left my school and I had to make new friends in LA and create myself. And it took me years. And I'm still, I feel like I'm finally at the point where I'm like proud of my music and proud of my style and the way I look and how I act and all of that stuff. So it's, I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't have a hit after that. You definitely have the, uh, the, the music and the talent side down, but your, your writing hits some really like hard hitting topics. And, um, for example, one of my favorite songs is, uh, is called Jocelyn. And I'm just curious, like, where does the, where does the, um, concepts, like where does the, uh, the inspiration for those kind of songs come from? Um, uh- it comes from my real life experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I pretty much only write about things that I, I go through because that's all I know how to write about. Writing has always been my therapy. I've been diagnosed with depression since I was 11. And that was the way that I got my feelings out, especially like I didn't like going to therapy. And now I love it. But I, I when I was a kid, my mom would like force me to go to therapy and I would sit there and I wouldn't want to talk to these people because I was like, why do I want to talk to this random old bitch? Like, I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> I was like 11. <laughs> So I would go home and I would sit in my room and I would write songs about how I felt. And so that's always just been what I did. So I don't know how to write about other people and other things. I'm trying to do that because now I don't want to have to ruin my own life to write good things. I don't want to have to, you know, because people like my sad songs. They like my angry songs and stuff like that. So I don't want to always have to be sad and angry in order to write a good song. So I'm working on that. Do you look for trouble now just because you're like, fuck, yeah, I got to get my heart broken. Of course I do. (laughs) Just sees a guy, she's like, he's going to break my heart. I'm falling in love with him. Is that just for potentially to inspire in co- upcoming music or or are you dating people well, I don't like want- that out of out of uh, non desire to commit to that kind of relationship yeah. at this time of your life? I don't want I don't want a relationship. I uh, want to be able to have as much fun in my life when I'm young as I can. I definitely could see myself when I'm older being in a relationship. But every time I get close to a relationship, I stop liking the person. Every time? Pretty much, yeah. But you have demons of your own, correct? Yeah, I do, obviously. Like, what, do you, what do you think that guy's saying about you? Like, um, I, don't know. I love how she laughed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's a sicko. I'm okay. okay. I'm a nice person. You no, are, you're a nice person. She's fantastic. You, uh, I'm, you yeah, can, I'm, you can I'm be a nice. You can be a nice person. I saw you recently for the first time in a while, and and the first thing you said to me was, "Wow, your hair is disgusting." <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. But you could have just. Well, I, I we said have, nice we have to see you. We have that kind of relationship where no, I can we hide don't. Those no, we do. no, we do not. Yeah, we do. No, yeah, you no, do. we don't. Yeah, we do. She described to me the other day. She's like, you know, like I can be mean to you because, uh, uh, because you have no feelings, and I know none of it affects you. And I'm like, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm crying on the inside. I'm you like, literally, yeah, the only time you. you ever cried is about a video of John Cena. I fucking love John Cena. <laughs> I swear, I love him. Wait, he, you swear. cried over dude, a video dude, of this, John Cena? There's a video of his fans. Uh, saying super nice things about him, like in front of him, and and I cried. He wanted to prove to me that he had emotions, so he sent me because she kept telling me that I did it. Yeah, he stirred the emotions <laughs> up yeah. for the video. No, no, Tra- no, trust me, I no. know him better what than exactly. anyone. John Cena made me cry. <laughs> he's Just, an iron. He's an iron I'm fucking not, body. I'm not. I'm not a sociopath. <laughs> Speaking of that, don't you have a song called Sociopath yeah, coming do. out tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yeah, April second. Mm-hmm. Where'd you find the inspiration for that particular track? Out of curiosity, um, I. You know, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep pr- pr- probing you until you fucking answer one of these very specific questions. Do you, do you I. want me to answer Jocelyn, that question? I.E. Jocelyn, I.E. fucking Do you really want me to answer that question? Yes. Do you answer. want me to answer that question? Sure. Do you? Do you want me to answer that question? It's her manager, Max. It, um, he, like, maybe see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe see where this goes. I love him. He's you know great. what? Can you can someone bring me that white claw over there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're 21, right? Yeah, I'm 21. Fire. When yeah. you turn 22? Uh, November. Whew. Thank you. She's like, let me take a sip and then we can get into this shit. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, let's let. You want to detour? Let's detour for a sec. All right, just to get back. <laughs> now on I track got the alcohol. Here. All right. All right. Oh, whoa. I know when you were talking on the phone. Yeah, yeah, she was shaking Sorry, a little yeah. bit. For, uh, I always do that. Okay. I have an iron, defi- iron deficiency. What? Oh, it's an iron deficiency, not anxiety. Oh, and anxiety. I have OCD. I have ADHD. I have depression. 
I have an iron deficiency. I have hypothyroidism. Do you want me to get to you? <laughs> Why don't you start by telling us what you don't have? Um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I quicker. don't think I have cancer. Thankfully. Wow, well, like, you guys are dog shit, huh? Starting it's off strong. really hard to be light in here. Starting off. Well, strong. I got sunlight. So you talked about lack of relationship mm -hmm. and, and desire for that. Uh, being in the poor things group, I, I feel like I know why you you like to party. You like to party, Olivia O'Brien, just a little bit. You like to go out. Okay. You like to be on the scene. You like to see the people. You like to dance. I love to dance. I was actually a competition hip hop dancer at one point do in my life. Do you have a video of this? I do. I do. It's really <laughs> fucked. I was like 12 and it's on my Instagram. I posted it. It's funny. <laughs> so funny. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't really have a large ass, but I can make it do some things that are fun. So I like to, I like to do that. I, I, um, I, but also I, what were you going to say? No, I just, I remember, I remember the first time I saw you in Ibiza, it, I was, I was impressed. Thank you. I was, I was literally so like, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> would you, would you, know. this may be a little bit but too much, but would him. you be, no, no. would you want to, would you want to twerk on the you, you impulse? You can't ask our guests. No problem, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. <laughs> you can't say that. No problem. He's newly single right now. <laughs> He's taking every opportunity. Every he opportunity. Get. Mm -hmm. the I'm reason, so sorry. The reason I ask is because she actually tried to teach me and Logan how to twerk the other night. Oh, I yeah. did? Yeah. At, yes, you uh, did. At, at ba Bozzy's house, yeah. right? Yeah. We're at um, Bozzy's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you tried to teach us how to twerk. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work. That rhymed. It's not a crime. Because I don't feel it's, I don't feel it's teachable. The, the, no, I, it's no, teachable. I learned from a YouTube yeah. video when I was 12. No, but you, I, I believe some people have like a, a specific joint in their hips that, that lends itself to twerking more. Like my hips just don't bend like that. Like I don't got what it takes. I end up just, you know, that one meme with the girl with the short hair. She's like, she got glasses on. That's me. Tina from Bob's Bel yes, Bob's Burgers. Burgers. Yes, exactly. Tina Belcher. That's me. You got yeah, it. You got you it. You looked though. like that for sure. Yeah. So like what part of you is is <laughs> when you dance is like, oh, this is mainly like butt focused or like I'm really getting into it. Well, I just like to you dance. Make, so you I'll make do fun it. of my dancing when I try to have fun at parties. You always you always go out of your way and you come no, up to me I and tell me. Yes, you do. You say you have no you're so awkward. You're you're a okay, nerd. You you're making me. it seem like I literally come up to you and bully you. Well, hold on. You I do. can attest. You, you do. You, do. <laughs> you you roast him all day. And by the way, I think part of the reason is because he needs to get fucking roasted. Exactly. And you, and, and, I'm and here you to do put him in his place, correct. to tell him what's up. Yeah. And <laughs> there you go. I'm, I, I'm humbling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever, dude. What? I've cried myself to sleep because of you. Olivia, no, you bro. haven't. You literally haven't. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm definitely <laughs> exactly. lying. Exactly. But also, can we talk about how you just said that I like to party? Because yeah. I don't think I like to party that much. Right. Like, I don't do like cocaine. Like, I don't do like any of that shit. I just drink alcohol. You're not in. You're not one of the pow like, powder puff girls. I'm not, <laughs> what are the powder I'm rangers? A, I'm not a powder ranger. Powder ranger. No, <laughs> but I, I go through phases where I'll be like, I can't drink anymore. Like I'm ruining my life because I have really bad anxiety. So then I stopped drinking for a while, and then I just recently, like this guy that I was talking to, ended things with me, and I was like, I'm gonna go get drunk. And I got drunk a few times and I didn't get hung over a single time because I told myself that I was going to be fine and I was fine. And I told my therapist that and she was like, I'm so proud of you. Like you have to have fun. <laughs> your I therapist like, sounds like a yes man. Your therapist is no. a yes man. <laughs> you your therapist from like a group on? Like in the back no, because, of like a because normally I'm afraid to. And she always tells me I need to go have fun with my friends because I'll always go home. Like we'll be at Stoss's house, like just sitting there watching a movie or doing something. And I'll just go home because I get sad. What I can't she, do that anymore. What is she not proud of you for? There's my a, therapist? Yeah. Did she ever like, ooh, Olivia, maybe that wasn't the healthiest thing to do right now? Um, Hooking out with my exes. Oh, God. Always a tragic topic. Always a tragic topic. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. It's called recycling. What's so bad? I felt like so you bad? looked What's at so me bad? like you wanted to say something. You just no, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't say anything. That's so bad. I don't. I don't understand. Recycling is great. Recycling is, it is. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Save, mm -hmm. save the environment. I've seen this dick before. I will reuse it. <laughs> she, wait, she shuns you for that? No, she's just like, maybe that's not the healthiest thing ever, but like, if you want to have fun. See, she oh is a yes man. That's what I'm saying. She's a fucking yes. Your therapist, like your therapist is a yes man. Be like, and by the way, like next time, let a girl know. Like, <laughs> You gotta get involved somehow. Like, but dude. I don't go to therapy for like my bad life habits. I go to like get my anxiety under control. So like, as long as I'm not having that, she doesn't. She's like, you're 21. You're gonna obviously like. I'm not gonna tell you never drink alcohol and never do anything. But is it is it working? Because I think like one of the yeah. biggest things 
I found through for therapy and, and for life in general to control, especially OCD, but also anxiety is boundary setting. And like you, you set these boundaries for self, for yourself. And you'll notice that anytime you cross those boundaries, you, you fire back up. And so like, are you drinking a little bit less now? Is oh, that what, I think what that's I'm what it is. I don't like, I'm not, cause what, there was a period of my life where I was drinking like only once a week. I was like, I'm only going to drink on Saturday cause I don't want to ruin my life. I don't want to drink all the time. So every Saturday I would get blacked out. Like I would die. I was die. there. I was there. <laughs> I was there. Die. So then I would get really hungover and then I would like feel gross and sick. And then, but if I'm just like drinking a little bit every single, no, not every single night, but like, if I'm drinking <laughs> right. a little bit. And then I'm, I'm fine. I just have to know my limits and not be like, tonight's the one night that I can drink. I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, well, that's not good. Well, yeah. this recent bender you described was, mm -hmm. was from a, a, a breakup. It's not a break. It's not a breakup. I never have a breakup. I have why, like a, why, what, what do you mean you never have a breakup? Because I don't do, I don't get into relationships. Well, what are you doing? The I just like expires. talk. Well, I was talking to this kid for like yeah, yeah. five months and then. It seems like a relationship from this angle. No, well, it's, he doesn't even live in LA. So I only hung out with him in person a few times. So it wasn't that. Long wasn't distance that doesn't count. Yeah. And then he came to LA and we were like, he was going to, we were planning, not, we weren't like planning anything specific, but like he was going to hang out with me and my friends and all of that stuff. And he texted me, like he was being weird. He was kind of not replying to me and I just felt like something was off. So I texted him, I was like, hey, is everything okay? Like what, like you've been weird. And he was like, yeah, actually like I just didn't know how to tell you, but like I'm not in a place mentally right now like where I can be anything more than friends with you. But like when I come to LA, I still really wanna hang out <laughs> with you and your friends and like hang out and be friends. I said, I, literally don't need any more friends. I have so many friends and I don't want to hang out with you. Why, why, do girl, why do girls never want to be friends? I always. I have a song called No More Friends. That's okay. <laughs> Classic fuckboy excuse though. Classic. Uh, how did the long distance, I, I've thought about these ideas before of like, you know, you're living in LA and say like, I meet some girl in like, for example, right? How do uh, those relationships, how, Mike, I, what? How do those cut that out? Fuck! Cut that out. It's our first cut. It's our first cut. By the way, it's just because so he you laughed, know, and then you laughed. Just so you know, if we didn't, no, we're, we're just gonna bleep it. This is all saying. Okay, okay, if okay. we That's kept just, straight face for that, I know it was my fault. Like, right that was the first one I let. I was the first one. God damn it! What was it like being in a long distance relationship? It wasn't a real relationship. Sorry, a long distance fuck fest. Um, I wouldn't really call it that either, but it was it was weird because it's like I felt like I had a connection with him because we talked all the time. We would FaceTime for like five hours and watch movies. Oh and my we would, what? Yeah. Oh, that's exhausting. Uh, but it was fine. Like we would just like literally watch a movie and press play at the same time and like put in. Oh. Like, okay. Stop. I've never but, done that. Okay. This is Don't great. Care. Danny but, does that. <laughs> there you go. Wow. See, it's cute. So you watch something while he's in another place. Mm -hmm. Don't th doesn't streaming allow you to do that now? Like you I can do that Disney on like Disney Plus, it. I think. Yeah. But Disney we would like just figure it out. It was like funny how we would like press play and like try to like. Get that's very up. cute. <laughs> that's you're telling me that's not a relationship. And you're it's on Facetime <laughs> like on the count of three. Ready? One, two. No, you started well, it. Quick. Well, you apparently it wasn't because it doesn't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. But but also I realized that because after it happened, I was I was at my dad's house and I was his his girlfriend is a vegan chef and she was, she made us a whole dinner and we've been planning this dinner for weeks and I, we went to Santa or she, they live in Santa Clarita so I went there. And I was sitting there and I got this text from him and I literally, my stomach dropped and I was like, I'm sorry guys. Like, I just like kind of got dumped sort of like I need to go. And they were like, um, okay. And like packed up the food for me and I got in my car and I called Sydney and I was like, Sydney, we're getting fucking wasted tonight. And I drove my car and I played my, all my sad songs I listened to and I cried a little bit and I just let it all out. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm so sad. And then I got to my house. I took a fucking sip. I took another fucking sip. I put some makeup on. I got cute. And then I haven't cried once since. And I haven't thought about it since because I'm so much better now that I've gone through this kind of thing a bunch of times. Like I, I, I don't know if I'm like delusional or if I just am so much better at dealing with it. But then my, my friend Quinn, she sent me a text and she was like, Olivia, I'm gonna, uh, this might sound kind of harsh, but I'm gonna be honest with you. You obviously didn't like him that much if you were hooking up with other people <laughs> when you were talking to him. And I think you just liked the idea of him. And I was like, that's so fucking true. And so ever since she sent me that, I've been like super chill about it. And then, you know, I did some recycling and now I feel so much better. Don't point at me. No, cause you gave me good advice. Kind of what she just said. Uh, the best relationship advice you ever gave me, you said, Logan, you need to fall in love with pattern, not potential. Oh yeah, yeah. The idea of someone is so, it's so fleeting. It's, it's non-existent. Mm -hmm. 
The, it, the theory behind uh, pattern not potential is like when you fall in love with somebody and you're like, if he could be like this, it's a mirage. It's fake. He doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But if you fall in love with a pattern, you're like, oh, this guy, I love what he does. Then you fall in love with that person. A lot of people look at that, like the outer look of it. Yeah. And they're like, I like the package. What's in it is not great, but hopefully one day it will be mm. great. And, and a lot That's of people totally will what I be. Do. No, I do that all the time. And I feel like I, I fantasize about things and about people. Like I'll, I'll create these, these things, these ideas in my head of like what we could be and like, it's That's never, called masturbation. I, no, no, I think no, I think everyone does. Everybody does that. I did that this morning. No, not masturbation. <laughs> I'm talking about like fantasizing about what could be. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I do I do it all the time. I'm I'm so guilty of it, right? But then I always am so attached to like the fantasies about people and I'm never actually I don't I fail to recognize who they actually are and what they actually would be if we were to date, which is why I never get myself into relationships because that's all that I see and it'll never live up to it. Do you feel like that's more your fault? I was going to say, completely. have you, are oh, okay. you, are you the problem here? Maybe, but also it's like, we didn't get to the point where we were in a real relationship yet. So, and I'll, but this, this, this thing is like not a great example of like how things normally go, I guess. I don't know. I could be the problem or well, well, you're also, young, you're so young. Well, that's what I was yeah, going to say. It also I don't depends. Want that, so. It all yeah, it also depends on like what you're considering uh, assuming there's a problem means there has to be a, an objective or a goal for there to be a problem for that. And if the objective or goal is for her to not date anyways, then there is no problem. There's no exactly. fucking issue. You know what I'm saying? Like people should just be out there having fun. Now, the the major problem is that everybody likes to keep things cash until feelings get involved and that's when things get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I I try to be an expert in that field of keeping things extremely casual, Ma managing the amount of time you spend with people after you have sex with them. Don't bring a toothbrush to my house. Mm. You have no hole for your toothbrush mm. here. Leave it home. <laughs> Go home after. Keep your dog there. Mm -hmm. Don't bring your pets. Don't bring your toothbrush. Don't mm. bring your bag. Mm. Bring a pair of comfy sneakers to change out of your heels from the night before yeah, yeah. and a hoodie and that's it. This then is why I don't wear heels and I just already am wearing sneakers so I don't have even the have to walk, do it that. Softens, I'm always ready. It softens the walk of shame. Are you ready for it a run? The you fucking take no, walk of shame. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, a new podcast fueled by Monster Energy. This summer, professional skateboarder Nyjah Houston, shout out Nyjah, we love you Nyjah, will represent the US in Tokyo for skateboarding Olympics debut. But for Nyjah, the real skateboarding happens in the streets, pulling out videos, shredding with your friends, being a thrasher, that's what it's all about. Plus, he keeps a voodoo doll on his nightstand as a talisman, superstition, or secret keys to success. Here for yourself by tuning into episode one of the podcast as Nyjah breaks down raw street skating and living the life of the world world's most winning street skater hosted by sports personality the dingo and professional snowboarder danny cass unleashed is the alternative sports podcast you've been waiting for brought to you by monster energy back to the program she's like this my walk of shame oh i had a really crazy walk of shame the other day Heels. I walked into Jamba Juice and I was literally like showing under boob oh. and I was like, I need to leave. It was <laughs> like 9 a.m. Do you have heels on? No, I don't wear heels. I'm 5'9". Right, right. like, well, sometimes I do actually, but I wear like big platforms. I like to sometimes, like if I'm doing, like whenever Stoss, Stoss always throws these parties where like we have to dress up crazy. Like we did like a play by Bunny Halloween one a couple years ago and like I'll wear big stripper heels and be like 6'3 and just like scare everyone. I like to like be scary to men sometimes. She said playboy. <laughs> what does hey, that even mean? She said, I hey, know what it means. Hey, you're coming home with me tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just walking no, up. not even for that. Like I just like to be scary because I think it's like powerful and I will also, say, you're, you're like feminist. really drunk at parties and you're that high. Do you ever get wobbly and people are like, this bitch about to fall There's off? usually <laughs> a point where I take them off. Uh, the last time I wore the big stripper heels to um, something, I came home and I fell on my, I was walking up my stairs and I tripped because they were like so big and I was wasted. And my Uber driver was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> and I had like the craziest scratch on my knee and I was, it was really scary. So I don't know if I'm going to be wearing them again anytime soon. You said a, a Playboy Bunny Halloween party. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this party on the show before. I consider it to, it to have been one of the best parties I've ever been really? to. Really? Do you remember who was the, at that party? Because yeah. Sauce is so weird about her list. Like she makes it like really small, but like cr the craziest people show <laughs> Drake, up. Drake, Kylie, <laughs> like everybody, right? And I always think back to that party yeah. because I was dressed as Spider-Man, no underwear on <laughs> Did bul bulge out. And I, cause I thought it was gonna be like kind of us. Yeah. And I get there and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and actually that it was fun though. Actually, remember the last picture on the slide from that night with me and Sandy? <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> we still talk yeah. about that. We still crazy. talk about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that one so was cool. nuts. <laughs> we got Sick. those are some yeah. crazy photos. I was gonna yeah, never, sounds fun. Yeah. I was yeah. I was parlaying yeah. into something here. Do you have a Hollywood moment? A Hollywood moment, like where you were just like, yo, wow, like wow, I, I'm out here, dude. I'm um, fucking out here. Not really, honestly. I mean, sometimes when I'm drunk, I'll, I'll be like, whoa, like when I was like 13, I would have thought I was so cool right now. But like, other than that, I don't like. I feel like every person that I meet that I was once like a fan of or like thought they were really cool and they're really big or whatever. Are you listening to me? Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> trust me. I can. I'm a. I'm a skilled multitasker. Okay. I was. I was like. I'm locked. Great. In. I love I'm it. Here. Guys, Go. stop. We're trying to find this picture. I'm well, trying to he find was. I saw that he was. So the gonna infamous help him. last, <laughs> last No. Line. Are you putting that? Have you showed people that before? It's on my Instagram. Oh, no. It's the last oh, picture. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yo, actually, you're in this picture, too. It's just hilarious. Oh, my every, God. Every comment on any photo I posted from that night was, I thought this was James Charles. Anytime I wear makeup, everyone comments. What, like, oh, what happened James. here? Where was the disconnect? Because my man's going for a peck. <laughs> and she's and like, Sydney's uh, trying to eat your that face. That was back in my very respectful days of Hollywood. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Yo, he's not even puckered. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> Those are my very respectful days. How are you so casual days. next to this? Look at Banks on the side doing a duck face. It looks like a sad face because he's not getting a kiss. <laughs> I was just trying to be normal. I don't know. Wait, I, I think my Spider-Man costumes. Yeah. You do your makeup very nicely. I didn't do my makeup. But I got it done. Oh, okay. but thank yeah, you. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into the yeah. into the part. I used I, to I've, never wear. I used to wear onesies every Halloween. Like I, the year before that, I was an eggplant, a unicorn, and um, a hot dog. Why are you trying? Why? Why did you switch up? I love that. The because, more like. Bland. Yeah, because I was like, I think I'm so cool and quirky, and I'm not like these other girls who are just like sluts. Like, yeah. I didn't actually think that. Like, <laughs> I, just I just talk like that. that. <laughs> and I then just talk like Stoss that. and Kelsey take Halloween so seriously, especially Stoss. Like, she takes it so seriously. She was like, Olivia, you're getting a spray tan. You're getting glam. Wow. You're getting wigs. We're doing matching costumes three of the nights, and we're going out five of the nights. I was like, whoa. It was, well, it was the a week. It was a week. Holly week. Holly week is the biggest thing with them. So once I me, we got really close, I was friends with her the year before that, too, but. That was like our first year where we were like, we're all doing matching costumes. And I had fun. Like I like dressing up because I don't normally dress up. Like I look like a boy 90% of the time. Like I don't like to wear makeup. I don't like- But at I least just... that boy is one of the best looking boys on the internet. Thank you. Yeah. James Charles. James Charles. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where to parlay from that. No, I, go. <laughs> I've actually bumped into you a few times at parties before they introduced me to you. I didn't know you were a singer or songwriter and you were the sweetest person. So thank you. A lot oh, of people say I'm very proud of you for keeping you humble. <laughs> what? Thank you. I think, no, I, listen, I, I wasn't like talking to her for 10 Logan, minutes. It was a high I'm five. nice to everyone, everyone else. Everyone I'm else. nice to yeah. everyone. Who is the person that I know then? What? The purple hair girl who just made fun of me. And where's the purple hair? I goes over it. I'll really? be honest with yeah. you. You kind of fucking deserve it, Logan. Thank you. I'm sorry. It, yeah, like, Logan, you're a piece of shit. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, but okay, as far as like, as far as like, fuck, actually, because I, I just forget it. <laughs> this is on your birthday. No wonder we're gigging up on you, bitch. Boo! <laughs> oh, God. Fucked up. I <laughs> promise I'm not a bully, guys. No, nah, she's not. She's not. You are done with the purple hair. Yeah. So many people knew you for that purple hair. That's the girl with the purple hair, they would say. <laughs> Yeah, but I felt like it was kind of <laughs> becoming it was like a it was like a, a crutch for me because I thought when I first dyed my hair purple, it was because this guy that I liked, his favorite color was purple and things ended and I every time I saw the color purple, I'd like thought about him and I was like, I don't want to think about this dumbass when I think about the, my favorite color. So I just did everything purple. I was like, I'm dying my hair purple, my album, I'm make, gonna make everything purple. I'm gonna only wear purple, my whole room's gonna be purple. Like, because it, it's always been my favorite color since I was a kid. You're an so, extremist, huh? You do every, you, everything yeah. you do is just fucking right. Yeah, I'm fucking insane. <laughs> but I, yeah. I kind of held onto it also as like, I have purple hair, so like I don't look like these other girls. Like I'm not, I can't compare myself to like the blonde girl or the brunette girl. Like I don't have to be pretty because I can just be like the gr weird girl with purple hair. Like that's kind of what, what I thought about it. And then I was like, at, it was actually the beginning of quarantine. I was really bored and I was like, you know what? I don't want to have purple hair anymore. And I like stripped out my hair myself. I like, I didn't bleach it, but I just like basically used a formula and got the purple dye out. And then I just haven't dyed it back since because I was like, I don't need to hold on to that anymore because like I'm confident in myself without having to like be different and like be weird. Yeah, you you seem to change rapidly. <laughs> like you you really do. And I and like yeah. it's it's uh, it's, it's interesting. Scary. It's interesting to watch. You 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 uh 
Cause like, I, it's not like I've known you for all that long, but I've seen you go through a few stages. I, I like to say right now you're in what I would consider to be the grandma O'Brien stage. So like you, you rock a lot of fur, big furry I sweaters. I wear a lot of sweaters. I came to your house the other yeah. day, you were knitting. Like it's, it's <laughs> happening, dude. Like it's, <laughs> you like to lay around with Dexter. I'd love to pull Dexter mm -hmm. up on the screen just to, mm -hmm. you I was going to bring him. Oh, I wish you did. Is that a dog? Yeah, yeah my dog. Is, it, is it a dog? If, yes, it, it is. More like a it rodent is a dog. A dog. Dexter. Okay. I thought you love dogs so much. You're bullying my dog. I do love dogs. Um, no, I, lo I like I like dogs. I gotta I gotta side with Logan on this one. Dexter De Dexter's an oddball. Yeah, oh, but he's, he's one cute. of the oddest. But Show me the picture honest. and I'll give you an honest oh, okay. feedback okay. about your dog. You have no pictures of your dog oh on your God, Instagram. Oh my God, Olivia! No, what she, is wrong no, with you? Go down the phone. fucking line. I'm, he's I'm, my background I've been on my scrolling. phone. That's your dog. Yes. I've been scrolling. Um, cute. I'm still scrolling. Yeah, that's a rodent. Tim, we just pulled up on like half nude photos before Dexter. I I can't. Okay. You have Those were brand deals here, here. with Savage X Damn, Fenty, yo, and I made money. If you're so. watching this episode, scroll okay. down on Did you call Olivia's Instagram. No, it's not have purple lights on in my room. Oh, okay. <laughs> that might get us age. That might get us uh, age gated. Oh, Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, there oh, oh, oh. Right there. Oh, he looks cuter there. He looks way cuter. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first day of tour. Aw. Aw. He looks happy for you. Mm -hmm. What is it about Dexter that that you love so much? Um, he literally follows me around everywhere I go. He loves me more than any person ever will. Like he's obsessed with me. He's my best friend. He's also obsessed with everyone. Okay, but he's extra obsessed with me. Mm. He just wants love from everyone. But the, at the end of the day, if I'm going over here and y'all are going over here, he's following me. Promise you. I don't even have to have him on a leash. I can. I walk him outside and he just goes around and I'm like, Dexter, come here. And he comes back. Is that how you want your boyfriend to be? No. Do you even want a boyfriend? No, I'm, I'm, already she already no, no, but I'm trying to like gauge. I'm trying to gauge what's happening here. Because you talked about hating men, but I don't know. I don't know if I believe you. I don't know. I don't I hate all men. I just hate um I just there's so many things about the way that society treats women. And I think misogyny misogyny negatively affects men as well as women. Like guys aren't supposed to cry and guys have to be strong all the time mm -hmm. and like there's stigmas about like sexual assault for men, all this stuff. Misogyny affects everyone. Mm. And it has made me resent men a little bit because <laughs> I don't like the things that I see in our society. And I don't like the way that, and I have lots of guy friends like Mike over here. I don't like the way my guy friends talk about women. I'm not going to lie. I, not, that doesn't include me. <laughs> sometimes does it, it really? Does. I sometimes. Like to think I'm pretty, all right, anyway. Sometimes. You're not, you don't say anything like offensive or like horrible, but I'm just so like, sometimes I'm just like- you don't listen to this like, podcast <laughs> at all. I like that. <laughs> so you're not a viewer. <laughs> no, I'm actually not. That's so not Do you have true. any ideas how many times he goes, Danny, air muffs. <laughs> no, that's because I'm talking about sexually explicit topics. They're not to, they're not to demean women or discount their their, be their beauty and, and importance to this world. They're just topics that I prefer. That's why I say Danny earmuffs because I care about women. No, but men are like afraid of powerful women. And I think that if in order for a guy, like every time I talk to a guy and they're like, wow, you're so like not like other girls. Like you're so interesting. And you're like this, you're not like other girls. So what if I was like other girls? It doesn't make me like any less respectable or any less intelligent. Like, I think that's a stupid way to look at women. I think it actually Insecure. does make you both of those things. What? I think it actually does <laughs> separate you in both of those categories. Okay, but Respectability I just think, and but I just, intelligence, I, just I think, think literally are directly to correlated to what the man is trying to but say. But I think it's stupid to associate being intelligent with being not like other women or like not a woman. Why? Because that's saying that women can't be intelligent. No, or it's not. Aren't yes, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's saying, saying women aren't generally intelligent. Is, well, if you it's saying intelligence is a dif differentiating factor. And just like any male or female, well, you, yeah, you might you, be a little smart. Yeah, but I don't say, Logan, you're not, not like, like other, other men, guys. Yeah. You're so smart. A I lot never of girls say, say that. that. You're not like the other guys. Yeah, yeah but, but not about but them being are. smart or not about them being successful. Also, a lot of insecure guys. If you see a successful guys. woman, it's rare. If you see a successful guy, it's not rare. And successful guys can uh, do whatever they want. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't want to get into it because I'm going to start going on a rant. But No, you should. Oh, no, it's fine. We like this one. This one's good. I wish, I wish somebody, I wish somebody would tell me you're not like other guys. They always just say, you're, you're like, all the other guys. <laughs> like, fuck, you're a little bit funnier. I, but. I think she's right. There is a lot of insecure guys. There is a lot of insecurity in the world, but there, that also goes with, with females as well. I think when a guy is, uh, feels insecure, he will try to bring the quality down in the female because he wants her to quote unquote be on his level. And so she doesn't feel like he's greater or she's greater than him. Yeah. But that's insecurity. That's his issue. And not guys, her issue. guys like to get their ego stroked. The next time a guy right? tells you that you're not like other women, you should say, that's so funny. You're exactly like every other guy I've met. <laughs> I was. <will. laughs> no, but, but it's, I it's, just, it's not even just that. It's like, I feel like whenever, like say that there's a, a successful woman in a company and everyone else is a guy. Like they, they don't think of her as a woman. They're like, oh, she's like one of the guys. Like, oh, she's like 
one of us. She's smart. She's this. She's not like she's not like that. They don't associate <laughs> women with being successful. You have to be you have to have like almost characteristics of a man to be considered successful and intelligent. You don't have to raise your hand. I uh, I just <laughs> got off the phone with my team yesterday and made my girlfriend uh, the running of my company. She runs my company. That's fire. She's I find the CEO of and, and guess what? I still have sex with her and I'm very much attracted That's to fire. that woman. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's just the men you hang out with. I think you're kind of hanging out with little boys in LA. Do you have sex with her or does she have sex with <laughs> she you? She has sex with me. That's how That's dominant fire. she is. She's CEO of Bubba We love Town. a dom. <laughs> we love a dom. Does she peg you? He does. He does. Uh, I don't know what that means and I'm afraid to say yes or no. Connect the dots. Context clues. The thing, no, <laughs> she does not peg me. <laughs> On the oh, misogyny tip, because I, I know it's a topic that we wanted to get into with you because you're, you are vocal about it. You're vocal a lot of about a lot yeah. of topics, a lot of social issues, a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. I think on the misogyny thing where it gets tricky is, you know, when you, when you say a man is, uh, exposing or, or, uh, um, exhibiting mis misogynistic tendencies, but then also elevate a women's right to do so. Like we're, we're obviously women, society is, is, is not frowning on women sexualizing themselves mm -hmm. or going out and having sex with multiple partners at the same time. I just don't like when it, when one lowers and one raises, do you know what I'm saying? I yeah. think we should all be looked at on a similar plane. So if we're going to, if we're going to raise women's ability to go and, and have, and be more sexualized and, and run that part of their life, we shouldn't be trying to limit a man's ability to do so. I don't as think well. it has to do with that as much as it has to do with like, it, we're in a bubble in LA. We're in a bubble. Most yes. of the people that we know are like pretty liberal and pretty, like they know what they're talking about with social issues because we're all very active on social media. And sometimes people feel like almost pressured to learn about all these things mm -hmm. and to post about it and to be aware because it's kind of our job, right? Where we have all these followers, we have to tell people like what's up and speak about important things. So we are around all these people that have similar beliefs to us generally. And in the rest of the world, and at least in, I mean, other countries are a different story, but in other places in America, it's not the same. People don't think of women in the same way. Like, it, and also, especially, it goes back for me to like sexual assault. Like ev every single girl, almost every single girl that I know has been sexually assaulted or has like a family member or like a really, really close friend that has been sexually assaulted at some point in their life. And that's like so scary to me because people don't, people don't really talk about that, I feel like. And it's just, it's, it's scary. Like that, that, that's completely uneven for me. And it's just like, well, it's a scary topic and it's the same. It, I'm sure it's looked at the same way that, you know, mental illness was looked at at one point, be even back to being gay and, and, yeah. be, and being uh, confident enough to talk about that topic. And I think, you know, there's a lot of really strong women out there that are, are, and, and men that are breaking down those barriers to make feel, people feel more comfortable about and, it. But even with being gay, like people are still having to break down those barriers. Absolutely. Though. Like it's not over. That's what Absolutely. I'm saying with all this stuff too. It's like, okay, well we're okay with women being more sexually liberated, but our other people, a lot of people aren't. Absolutely people are still not. getting called sluts and like calling a guy a slut doesn't have the same kind of impact as calling <laughs> a girl no a slut. Impact. Exactly. But, but that's what I mean. But like there this, are words specifically designated to make women feel bad about being sexual. But there's do you want to know? There is. You're going to say there's not. What? Do you want to know a what it is? Bag? No. Fuck what? what? Fuck, oh, no, fuck, fuck what? no, that's not I what I was like, gonna say there, but so that dumb. has popped up a lot. But the big one in 2021 is that boy's for the streets. And I think it's used on girls a lot too, yeah, but, it is. but, but listen, that, but no, but, it's, but who's the girl that, saw, that came out with the song back to the streets? Uh, is it Jen Anko? Who was Jenny, it? Uh, Jenny, uh, Jenny Aiko and yeah. uh, Sweetie or something? Yeah, like maybe, that. right? Back to the streets. I don't want to be for the streets. Maybe the... What are we talking about? Are we talking about like posting That's news? So I, I kind of got lost. We're just talking about social. We're just talking about social it's change and conversation. But I think Logan's about to roll into a segment. We got nice. a segment. We have segments oh, on God. the show. No, it's fun. It's great. It's called more than two forty. No, like, no, no, no. It's good. Were it's you good. about to get fired up? No. Oh, because no. we get fucking fired up. No, I don't want to get okay, fired, fired up. up. <laughs> I'll start crying. <laughs> I cry a lot. <laughs> Well, hopefully you don't cry during this game. Oh God! But then again, maybe hopefully you do. This is called More Than 240. Uh, these are some of your tweets that you've tweeted. 240 is the character limit on Twitter. And uh, we just we just want to know what you were thinking. Oh if you could dive into these a little bit, oh, starting God. off strong. I can't tell if I hate myself or if I'm head over heels in love with myself. I'm just really mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... I'm sorry for laughing. It's, no, it's fine. You okay. can laugh. Okay, Did you laugh. write I hate you, I love you about yourself? No. <laughs> oh, that, that would have been cool. 
Okay. I mean, I guess it kind of works too. I think I go she through- She takes the credit. She goes, yeah, no, actually I did. That is exactly what <laughs> no, I No, I just, I go through phases where like I'll be sad and then I feel like whenever I'm sad, everything feels shitty. So like if I'm sad, I'll be like sad about my career and what I look like and my love life and my friends, like everything. I'll just think negatively about everything. And then when I'm happy, I'll think positively about everything. And I'm like, I'm awesome. I'm hot. My friends are awesome. <laughs> Whatever. I started the show with a question about uh, the ranges that we experience from a day to day life. And I think people that don't suffer with the same fate that me and you do with the mental world wake up every day and feel somewhere between, you know, 89 and 103 or whatever. Right. Like that is a cornerstone of the mental illness that we talk about. You wake up some days and you feel like you Horrible. don't even want to get out of bed. Yeah. You feel terrible about your life. And the next day you wake up and you're, yo, like, I'm the shit, the dog. Ever. Like, you yeah. get up. It's a cornerstone. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing I always tell the people watching is no matter how you feel, how you feel on any given day, show the fuck up. Get yeah. out of bed, get it done, and live for the next day. Sometimes that's kind of impossible, but we try. You can do it. You do it. <laughs> Here we go. I really need to stop rummaging through the trash to find men. <laughs> um... <laughs> When yeah. you tweeted that, did you go back to your exes and start recycling? What did um, I think it was like the day <laughs> after that? Um, no, uh, that was the I think that was the day that um, was this three days ago? March fourth. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the no. <laughs> I think that was yeah, the day that the guy like stopped talking to me, and I just posted that because I was like, it's eh, funny. But do you mean that? Well, I mean, I just always like guys that are just like, we've talked about, we talked about this. I like guys that are just, I know are going to be bad. So will you stop from the No. Do you <laughs> uncapitalize your eye when you start typing? I don't have my caps on. Just I've had it since like middle school. A lot, a lot of Gen Z is like that. All right, here we go. I'm so proud of the way I've changed and grown this past year. I'm becoming the person I've always wanted to be. Do I need to explain that? I don't know, Dylan. Yeah, that one feels one. Yeah, pretty. It might have been I good. I thought we'd end on like a nice note. Yeah, oh, that's, that's the nice. last one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, did you see how he just delivered that? Like yeah, he's a magician. Thought on a nice note. No. We would end it on a great note. And now watch me pull this out of my hat. <laughs> Small <laughs> rabbit. It's a bunny rabbit. Uh, that's all. That's mm -hmm. it. Evidently. Yeah. First that was, was mid-bender. Mid go back fucking far longer than a week ago, Dylan. Remember when we said we had good segments? We lied. We have another segment. Awesome. We, we Let's do, have, do a we, segment. We do have another segment. This one, this one is, I think, a little more fun. Oh, that's her mom again. Sorry. I feel like we should maybe hire someone to do this job, huh? Eventually. A B-I-T-C-H? What's it called? Behind the intern chair job? This game is called <laughs> Olivia O'Brien or Rom-Com. Okay. So these are either lyrics that you've written or that were in a rom-com. And I'm going to have my friends, George and Mike, guess which oh. one you guys think they are. I know this girl pretty well. You so. huh? Why are you not playing? Do you I, know? I looked at it. I did. Oh, yeah. gotcha. If you want a 100% hit rate, I can, run, I can get right, every single one right. First and foremost, no matter how hard I try or what I do, I just can never fucking impress you. Oh, that sounds like you. Yeah, that, that sounds like O'Brien. <laughs> Good job, guys. Feel free to explain. Explain it. Um, it's a song lyric for my song "Love Myself." Um, I don't know. There's nice. Well said. <laughs> well said. A song lyric. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> I wanted it to be you. I wanted it to be you so badly. That's from the Notebook. Fuck out of here with that shit. Sounds like a movie to me. A rom com. You've got mail. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. There's a movie. <laughs> well, why, do, why do I feel like if the last words of the two sentences don't rhyme, it might just be a rom-com? Yeah, <laughs> Like, probably. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Think that. Uh, oh, ah. now, now you just told me that I was wrong, so I won't do that. I wish I knew how to quit you. Mm. I wish I... Mm, he's so impressed with this. Like, he, he made it. Of course mm. he's impressed. You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's that's not you. I feel like that's not your work. This could be Olivia. This could be an OB, OB song. Uh, no, this is Brokeback Mountain. Oh, fuck. George up two to one. Brokeback Mountain. I gotta try to get back here. Maybe, maybe you say this one. Who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say this one? Um, don't, um, no, I'm good. You can say. It. I'd rather love and lose than never even get to love you. I actually don't know this one. There's no way you wrote that. Oh, this is her song. This is in the beginning. No way. <laughs> yeah. I'm so yeah. 
fucking wow. good, bro. I'm good. With I'd the rather purple love hair. Than Let's lose go. Then never even get to love you. I'm gonna throw up everywhere right now. This yeah. is so sweet. No, stop it. I actually, I actually suck at this game. <laughs> <laughs> Hope I distract you enough from the girl that you love. Rock I feel on. like Rock that's on. you. Yes. I feel like I feel like that's you. Wow. <laughs> I know you, huh? <laughs> I know, I know you. you. Better That's, than Mike, who I thought was one I of my best friends. Hey, add me to that group chat. I suck. <laughs> I suck, dude. Wow. I, did I never lose one? No, you got them all right. That's crazy. You even called out Brokeback Mountain like you watched it before. A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, I got to say, you're a great fucking guest. You've done a great job so far. I'm like, here. I have so much anxiety right now. Why? Because I'm scared I'm going to say something crazy. You're not, though. If you haven't, I haven't said anything now, you, crazy no, yet. No, not a single thing. Okay. There's all kinds of eyes, prying eyes watching, making sure you're not doing anything David, wrong. when did you even get here? I was there all the time. Oh. I feel hey. like David should jump. Can do, I, I'd love to have David. Can, so, can we tell the story yeah. of how, when I met David? What yes, happened? Yes. So the first time I met David, come on. Um, he comes up to me and he was like, Olivia, I have a video of you saved in my phone from May. It was like August or September. It's, it's all right. Of 2019, right? And he comes up to me and he shows me in his camera roll. He saved a video, a live performance Vivo video of me singing my song, We Lied to Each Other. And he had it in his phone and he was like, I listen to this all the time. I have to say, David. He has all my new songs. I send them, him all my songs after I write them. So David, David gets included in so many friendships mm -hmm. uh, that are, you know, uh, side effects of girls that are involved or whatever. And when I tell you, you are his fa absolute favorite person. He he fucking loves you. <laughs> like he's like, oh, where is O'Brien tonight? <laughs> where do you think O'Brien is you, tonight? If you watch the video back, you could barely hear her singing because you hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you guys do stick and pokes on each other and stuff. Yeah, they tattoo I do on him. I don't let him do it on me. Yeah, yeah I did love song. and hate, and then I did sad. Oh, this one. Yeah, he you comes tatted over him. Yeah, he comes yeah. over all the time. We hang out. Those were the good old days. I've, do, have you done one after the night when we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have. Yeah. I just must must miss the invite. What's your favorite thing about Olivia? Uh, her drunk text. That she just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she needs me. <laughs> Always there. That sounds like I'm asking you to hook up. You've never hooked no, up, guys. No, no, Yo, right. David. David is an incredible person. I just have to say this. He's like, great. He comes okay. to my house and picks he, me up and takes and me places. He like, also pulls. Yeah, David Fox. He's very nice, Fox. dude. He's, he's very nice. David, David Fox. Fox. Yeah. Pull he pulls bitches. <laughs> <bitches. laughs> no, like he does. I met one the other day, and she was really cute. She's cute. You know he's, they come in groups of like two or three, yeah. bro. Did, it's dumb, and you don't know which one is for him. And every, everyone David, in the house knows this. They're all for him. <laughs> yes, he's like, <laughs> he's, do the accent. I can't do it. Uh, these are all my girls. Please, <laughs> you do not speak like to it. They're all Russian. It's Russian. No, I just want him for the streams. But listen, what I'm saying is this uh great great looking kid great style also the german accent and i will say this there's a lot of people who have requested the dave, dave the german videographer impulsive episode we will do it it's going to happen <laughs> dave, 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 dave dave last dave, thing can you dave, say something dave. to your german to the people watching in german please don't hurt yourself ich brauche alle meine deutschen freunde uh, mit einem thumbs up for the next episode yeah, yeah. david yeah <laughs> Everybody in Germany is like, what the fuck did he just say? No, he didn't say anything. His, he knows his German. He's like the one person I don't let anybody like even remotely talk shit. I'm like, like viscerally, violently protective of my David, dude. Mm -hmm. Can I ask I you something? David. Can I ask you something that's kind of deep? It depends. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Great. When's the last time you had a real, real moment of love where you knew you're in so deep and you're in such a vulnerable place. Should it not work out where you're like, oh, this person has a piece of me and I may have been compromised. Never. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ever? Fuck no. Ever? I don't let myself get to that place. Why? Fuck no. Because one, I've always liked guys that don't, aren't going to feel that way for me. So I'll never get to a place where like, I feel like you can't really have that level unless it's mutual. And then the guys that I have dated, like it sucks to say, but I didn't feel that way about them. It was more just like I'm dating them because they're nice to me and I feel like I should be doing this. And I like to live, I'm a very extreme person. I like to live and I fantasize a lot. I like to live my life like it's a movie and because I like to write songs about it. So I'm always just trying to be super passionate and have all these emotions, but then I never, 
because I'm like that, it never I never get to a place where it's like some kind of deep mutual love. I just not your relationships sound obligatory. I oh. guess. It's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. But also it's not That's, because once again, it just depends on what you want from life. Like if you want, true. if your if your life is like, like this, this, we had this whole conversation on an episode. If your life revolves around building your brand and building content and building your business and writing dope stuff that will give you a legacy of being a great songwriter for the rest of your life or a content creator, then those obligatory relationships mm -hmm. are exactly what you want. And the only thing that would be sad would be getting into a real relationship. Exactly. I care way so it's just, more about my work than I do about But love. that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like people need to start, I'm not saying you disrespect it, but people need to start respecting this idea of people going after what they want in life. Mm -hmm. If you do not want to be in a fucking romantic, deep, meaningful, childbearing relationship, you don't I mean, it would be, be it would be nice, but I haven't met anyone that I feel like I would even want that with necessarily. Like, oh well, that's cool. Too. Like, You'll I, I always say that I don't want a relationship, but I'm not like, I'm not like opposed to one day meeting someone where I'm like, sure, Yo, I this person is like so amazing that I want that. Mm. So I'm sure it'll happen one day, but I'm not gonna. I'm not the kind of person that wants a relationship or needs someone to be there or like, I don't, I'm very good by myself. I love being single. I love being alone. I need my alone time more than anything. So I don't. I'm not looking for a relationship just to have a relationship, which I feel like a lot of people are. Can I, can I say one thing? I'm the deep weird one mm -hmm. in part of this okay. podcast. Uh, you know, when you get a new car mm -hmm. and you get in that car and you're like, this is great. Nobody has this car. And then you start driving. You're like, fuck everywhere I go. I see this car. Why do you think that happens? Because you're aware of it. So, and then you are not looking for it. I think it's because you're invested in it. You, you put your own money, you get into it. It takes you from place to place. And I think that if you have a certain type of mindset, that will always follow you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to be caught up in that mindset because when it is time for you to want that family, want that mature relationship, your eyes are going to be on a different prize and you're always going to be passing that car that you should be invested in. I don't know, man. Cause I think if I, if I saw, if I saw someone and met someone that would like, it's also not just about wanting to be with someone. It's not about liking someone. It's like, would this work with my life? And also, does this person also want this with me? There's so many factors that go into it. And there's like, I think I'm self-aware enough to be able to recognize when I see that person. I'm like painfully self-aware. Like I, that's why I have I such bad anxiety. I like that. I'm always <laughs> thinking about Everything, everything that I oh, oh I'm like the biggest overthinker in the entire world. No, I can see. I just said so, that out so you maybe you just no, like no. I I I can see that, but I don't think I, I feel like for me I'm. I'll, I'll be also, fine. you're so young. Okay. You're not going to be the same person you were in five years. Oh, from. I'm not even the same person I was last week. So. <laughs> that was not really the same person I was before I started when we show. started this podcast <laughs> I've already changed so much you guys thank you so much <laughs> she goes like this she's still as fuck she's like nope different person no still she's there. waiting for the white claw to kick in the slow <laughs> shakes down <laughs> guys I'm not an alcoholic I swear you're really not right I'm now not. I've seen you in some tough places. Okay. You're definitely. You're, no, no, no. It was a long time I'm ago. I didn't say you were. You're, you're great now. Phase. Yeah, for sure. What is more attractive to a girl in LA? Money or fame? What's more attractive to me or to a girl in LA? Just, uh, you got a group of friends. Is there a general consensus or uh, money, fame, Well, I think for my friends, it's like we all have our like own things going on. And so we want a guy that's at least as successful as us just because... Otherwise, guys get their egos bruised really easily. And I feel like it creates a weird dynamic when a guy feels almost emasculated by a woman that makes more money than them or is more successful than them. And it, it's just a weird, it creates a weird dynamic. And I've experienced that firsthand because I used to never think like about that stuff. And then I've, I experienced it and I was like, yo, I, this is not going to work out. So I think that's the most important thing. I have friends that really want to be taken care of and they want to feel secure in their life. So they want to date a guy that has a lot of money. Um, I don't think... I think it would definitely be money over fame because, like, who cares? But, I mean, I don't care. About fame I, mean, I, I think in LA is actually the opposite. And it, yeah, but one, well, if you're I talking about those one. people, but that's different. Like, I feel like that's different than my friends. No, yeah, for sure. But I think, but but on a more grand scale, I think LA is like the one city that bucks that trend. Because you go to New York, you go to Miami, it's all status. It's all yeah, it's all money. financial status. Yeah. And and even in New York, it's even but here it's, it's like even cloud. above it's even above money in New York. It's it's almost like old status. Yeah. Too. Like where do you come from? What's your lineage? Yeah. Like who's oh, your if family? If you go to Europe, like London, it's even like more you're, so. you're not even gonna be able. Even if you're like the richest person ever, you go there and you won't be cool because you're not like old money from and like the right from, family yeah. but LA is definitely the place to be if you're just like rich with because clout because everyone comes here and they want to be famous and that's their end goal so they come here and then they like try to meet famous people to like 
get suck their clout out of yeah, their asshole yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. Like it's not out of their poop holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty easy to see through those kind of people. Yeah, so. it's kind of well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they definitely could show up and fucking fuck you up still. Yeah, you see it happening That's true. for sure. For sure. You've stolen all my friends. This podcast has made me realize. I have. You're best friends with David. You're best friends with Mike. And then you mentioned London and Mac. 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 Best friends with Mac. Uh, I'm, I'm, me and Mac talk stop. every day. I went and visited him and we, I stayed there for two weeks. I saw him every single day. And now I'm friends with all his friends. Shout out Stod guy. Stod guy. Mm-hmm. Stod. He's the best. And now I'm friends with George. I know all of her lyrics. We're besties. <laughs> all right. Well. New music. Yeah, you do, oh, have, new you music. do have new music. Do you, your album. Uh-huh. You're supposed to perform at Coachella. I was. That that sucks. I know that it really canceled. sucks. If it happens, I'll be there. So we'll see. Um, I got a couple other music festival offers that are they're thinking are going to happen in the fall. Mm. So who knows? I mean, I can't. I don't know if Coachella will happen because it's um, uh, so big and like international. Like artists are coming yeah. from everywhere. People are coming from everywhere. But smaller festivals might be able to happen in the fall. So I've gotten a couple offers, and we'll see if those. Those happen. Okay, now, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't happen, could you just give us one Coachella intro on the show? Right All right, here you ready? Now? Yeah. Coachella, get your dicks out! Yeah! Yeah! That's what I was planning on saying, but it didn't work out for me. That's, I know, that's awesome. New music, where can they hear? What are they called? Sociopath. Sociopath. And then I have an album coming out. It's coming out in two parts. Um, episodic. hopefully soon. Yeah. It's episodic. Remember our writing process conversation? <laughs> we did our writing process conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck up George. <laughs> yeah. He can be a part of the next one since he knows all my lyrics apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Got a lot of new stuff coming. Hopefully I can get back on the road and get back on tour and do shows again. Cause I really missed that. But yeah. Amazing. Olivia O'Brien, everybody pay attention to her. Pay attention, Pay attention to it. She's on social media. Olivia O'Brien. Hit her up with that follow her streamer song. Her songs. Uh, links are going to be in the description. We love you. Thank you for listening to this episode of And Impulsive. Jocelyn's Bell. Oh! <laughs> and don't put that in. Don't put it in. <laughs> it was. So I was so so that. I go, hey, this shit's about. <laughs> No, if you're still watching the end of the episode, congrats. No. <laughs> We've had three cuts. That's it. Three bleeps. Wait, we're we beeping that out? Yeah. We have to. Oh, oh. Or I'll we post it on to. my vlog. We got it, right? <laughs> it's her fault. It's her fucking fault. Hit the subscribe button. We I'm love sweating. you. Bye.